my name is Venerable Manisara. I'm a bhikkhuni here at Damasara Nuns Monastery in Perth. And I feel very honored and very privileged to be able to offer this guided metta meditation on the occasion of Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday. Um, this is part of a week-long effort of offering practice to mark his special birthday. And I'm reminded of how the Buddha himself, before he passed away in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, he counseled us that the best way to honor him as a teacher is to practice his teachings properly. And this is actually a message I remember over the years, Ajahn Brahm echoing whenever students would ask how they could repay um, their feeling of, uh, of being in his debt in the sense of all the kindness he has shown them, how best to repay that and uh, to show their gratitude. And he always said, practice, practice the Dhamma, practice what I teach. And so, in honor of that sentiment, um, I hope today we, what we can do is to share some practice together as an offering of our, our uh, sense of gratitude and respect and devotion to Ajahn Brahm on his birthday. So, there are many, of course, aspects of his teachings over the years, but one thing that he really has been so enthusiastic about is teaching meditation and also the qualities that he emphasizes in his teachings, but also embodies in his, in his being, um, are the qualities of metta and karuna, loving kindness and compassion. So it's very fitting that um, this program will be offering a series of guided metta meditations. So uniting both his emphasis on meditation and also on metta or loving kindness. So, of course, there's many um, benefits of meditation, um, but most importantly, perhaps it is to purify and to still the mind. So being able to, to lead the mind into a state of stillness where the mind has the stability and the clarity to see things according to reality. And that's how wisdom is developed in the Buddhist path. So meditation is really a very crucial aspect of that. And also, as part of the meditation practice, but also the practice of the whole Buddhist path, metta or loving kindness is also key. It's found in um, the element of the right intention or right motivation, as Ajahn Brahm likes to translate it, in the Eightfold Path. It's found there as um, the wish to offer goodwill to all beings, the opposite of ill will. So this is something that underpins not only meditation practice, but the practice of the whole path. But today we'll be uniting that in the practice of metta meditation. So highlighting this quality of the mind, of kindness, of openness, and of freedom from ill will. And being able to train the mind in this quality through meditation. And we can see when people do train in this quality and train in meditation over many, many years, the result is that this quality becomes very well developed. And I think Ajahn Brahm is a wonderful example of someone who does embody a very well developed state of metta and karuna. We can see this in the way that he has tirelessly offered himself in service of the Buddha Sasana, whether it's through building um, the monasteries here in Perth but also through the giving of teachings, not only in Perth, but all over the world, so that all can benefit from the wonderful healing power of the Dhamma. So that's something that we see in his, his example of his life. But also personally for me as a, as a bhikkhuni, um, I was also, of course, very, very inspired and very touched by the way that Ajahn gave of himself, uh, not only offering moral support, but actually going out on a limb to make it possible for women to lead the full monastic life of full ordination and making this opportunity for women to, to lead this bhikkhuni monastic life and be able to benefit from the support it gives us. So seeing these examples of his metta in action, uh, often metta and karuna are very closely, <laughs> closely related. So whether you're calling love and kindness or you call it compassion, they're actually very, very closely related qualities of the mind is that 
goodwill towards others, but also taking action to express that goodwill, to help relieve people from suffering, other beings from suffering, and also pave the way for them to be able to develop greater and greater happiness. So it's very fitting that we offer metta meditation in honor of Ajahn Brahm's example, but also the example of all the great teachers of the Dhamma. Because when the mind is purified, the natural state of mind that comes forth is a freedom from all ill will and a wish for the, the well-being of all sentient beings. So today we can do a little bit of guided meditation to help us develop this in our own hearts, in our own mind. And maybe we can taste it, maybe we can have some experience of it, but of course we have to keep developing this, not only through a one hour guided meditation, but in, in the rest of our lives, over time. And with anything, with practice, it will grow. And then we can see the benefits in not only our own happiness, but also the happiness that we can provide for other beings. Because when you come into contact with someone who has such strong loving kindness, you can only feel a sense of peace and well-being in their presence. So as we have experienced this through Ajahn Brahm's example, we, are, we can be inspired to develop this in our own minds and be able to offer that to other beings as well. So now we can have a go at it. So if you'd like to find yourself a comfortable position. So if you're already seated in an appropriate place, that's great. If you're not, you can adjust yourself, move to a chair, sit on a cushion, whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable. And then just feel what your body feels like right now. And then also relaxing. So you can begin by actually showing some loving kindness to our own bodies. So if you like, you can imagine relaxing your face by bringing a sense of uplift. Imagine your eyes are smiling, if you can. And also your lips smiling, maybe slightly. See if that relaxes you. And then relaxing your face, the whole face, all the little muscles in your face. your neck and your shoulders. May they be comfortable. May my body be at ease. You can wish this for yourself as you go through your body, relaxing it. And then down your chest and abdomen. They're bringing a sense of ease and comfort. And then your upper back, working down to your lower back. And then relaxing your arms, right side. And then left side, you can adjust your hands so that you feel they are comfortable. Out of kindness to yourself, you don't have to look any particular way. Just do what makes you feel at ease. feeling how you're sitting, whether you're in a chair or a cushion. Just check that you're balanced. And 
and relaxing your legs one by one, your right leg, your knee, to your ankle, and then your feet and all your little toes. And your left leg, down to the knee, down to the ankle, and all the little toes. So may I be able to sit comfortably and at ease for the duration of this practice. Before we begin the actual meditation, just take a moment to think of three people in your mind that we will be using in the guided meditation. So the first, just think of one person. You may have several in your life, but just choose one that you can focus on today of someone that you feel a lot of friendliness or love towards, a simple and complicated love, such as a parent or a grandparent or a teacher. Someone find someone that you find easy to feel loving kindness towards. So that's the first person. And then think of someone that you might not know very well. You don't feel a strong like or dislike, just a neutral person. So just just pick one. Could be anyone, there's no right or wrong. That's your second person. And then the third person, think of someone you might have had some difficulty with in your life. So it doesn't have to be a huge difficulty, maybe just a minor irritation or something someone's caused you in the previous day. Just someone that'll be a little bit challenging to feel only loving kindness towards. So that's the third person. Just keep that in your mind so that when we come to that part, you don't have to spend time thinking about it then. But now we begin by focusing on ourselves, the person we are with all the time, (laughs) 24 hours. Sometimes in this world of self-criticism and judgment, it can be difficult for some people to naturally feel a sense of loving kindness or metta towards themselves. So one skillful means that we can use is to remember an experience or somebody in your life who has given you a feeling of loving kindness, who has shown you a sense of unconditional love. So on this occasion, if you are disciples of Ajahn Brahm, you can think of Ajahn Brahm. For others who may not know him, you can think of another teacher or a parent or somebody that you've experienced this from. So 
So whoever it may be, just try to imagine how you feel in their presence. Imagine they're in front of you and you're sitting with them and you feel their sense of goodwill towards you. For instance, when I'm with, have occasion to talk with Ajahn Brahm, I never get the feeling that he's judging me in any way. So imagine what that feels like. Just be accepted for who you are and how you are right now. Not being criticized or judged or measured in any way. I remember this phrase of his that he once said, that people are not perfect, but they're still lovable. So imagine you're one of those people who may not be perfect, but are still lovable. Just the way you are. You can imagine how this teacher or other person only has your welfare at heart. They want you to be happy and they feel very happy when you are happy. They have no thought of causing you harm. No hidden agendas. They really just want the best for you. And if you ever make a mistake, they'll just find it funny, but not a cause for blame. or recrimination. So feel in your heart area, your chest area, how you feel when you're in this kind of person's presence. And then channel it. Imagining that you're giving the same sense of loving kindness to yourself. So wishing for yourself, may I be well and happy. After you say those words, see how it feels in your heart.
So any mistakes you may have made or imperfections you may see in yourself, see if you can offer yourself a sense of acceptance and openness and forgiveness. Just sit quietly, dwelling in this feeling of well-wishing for yourself for a little while. If the feeling starts to fade, you can just repeat again the short phrase, may I be well and happy. Let it echo and resonate in your mind. And now you can bring into your mind the first person that we had talked about earlier. So the person that you find easy to feel metta, a loving kindness to. So you can imagine they're sitting in front of you. You can imagine looking at their face. And then remembering all the kindness this person has shown you in your life, all the times they may have helped you, even sacrificing their own comfort or ease. think of all the things you feel grateful for them. And notice the feeling that happens in your heart or chest area. What naturally arises when you think of them. Then you can say in your mind, may you be well and happy. Really 
you feeling the meaning of those words? Whatever happiness or well-being this person has brought to you, may they also experience great happiness and well-being themselves. So again, you can just dwell quietly in this feeling of loving kindness or well wishing towards this loved person. If the feeling fades away, you can repeat the phrase again, may you be well and happy. And just sit here for a little while, dwelling in that. And now, you can try bringing to mind the neutral person, the person you may not know very well, have no strong feelings of either like or dislike towards. Just imagine they're sitting in front of you, and you can look at their face, almost like any other face on a public bus or train. A feeling, a sense of care for this person. It's possible, isn't it, to feel a sense of care for even a stranger? spark this feeling in you, you may think perhaps of Ajahn Brahm when he's giving a public talk to all sorts of people in the audience he may not know. Yet there is the feeling of wishing to bring them happiness and peace. You can channel that feeling of well-wishing for even someone you don't know that well. 
Again, feeling it in your heart. And saying to this person, may you be well and happy. So even though I may not know you well, I know that you're probably not that different from myself in the sense that we all want to be happy. So just as one wants oneself to be happy, I can imagine this person also wants to be happy. So wish them well. Send a sense of loving kindness to them. Just remember, as we're going from person to person, the quality of loving kindness is not different. It's the same sense of well-wishing. So see if you can notice whether this feeling is remaining strong Or if it's starting to fade a little bit, just remind yourself again how even this neutral person also wishes for happiness. And wish this happiness for them. Again, you can just dwell in this feeling for a little while quietly, feeling it in your heart. And finally, you can bring to mind the fourth person or the so-called difficult person. Someone who may have caused you some harm or hurt. Imagine them sitting in front of you. Notice how you feel in your heart. If there's any tightening or resistance.
existence. Just noticing, not judging. But then reflecting how oftentimes when people hurt or harm us, it may simply be because they don't know any better. As Ajahn Brahm says, there's no such thing as evil in Buddhism, only stupidity. So understanding that no matter what this person has done to you, it's simply because they didn't know better. They didn't understand how it actually causes themselves harm when they harm another. Or maybe they didn't have enough mindfulness to stop themselves. So see if that softens your feeling of resistance. Feeling a sense of compassion for the harm that they not only caused you, but they might have caused themselves as well. In fact, not might have, but definitely caused themselves as well. And remembering that they too, in fact, also wish for happiness. And unfortunately, do things that lead away from that happiness. See if you can feel a sense of compassion and loving kindness for even someone who may have caused you difficulty, hurt or harm in your life. To say also to this person, may you be well and happy. And if you need to repeat that a few times before the feeling can really grow stronger in your heart, then do so. So spend a little time focusing love and kindness on this fourth person.
And now come back to focusing on the feeling in your heart, in the center of your chest, a feeling of wishing others well, Just quickly run through your mind, whether it's yourself or the person you find easy to feel loving kindness towards, or the neutral person, the person you don't know very well, or the person who may have caused you some difficulty in your life. just running through their faces. And forgetting about the storyline behind those faces. And just thinking of them as being human faces. Actually, essentially, no different from one another. So see if you can come in contact with that feeling of wishing all of them well, including yourself. And then opening your heart up wider and thinking not just of these four people. So beginning with yourself, but spreading outwards to all the people in your life who have shown you love and care, You feel gratitude and reciprocal feelings of loving kindness. Wishing them well, wishing them happiness, wishing them ease. And then spreading this loving kindness to all the people you don't know very well, but you feel neither strong like or dislike towards. And wishing them well, wishing them happiness, wishing them ease. and opening your heart even wider to wish all the people in your life who may have caused you any difficulty or hurt or harm, big or small, recently or long ago, and wish all of these people to likewise be well and happy Likewise, live with ease. And then just opening up your heart as wide as you can. Almost 360 degrees if you can. wish for all people, and not even just people, for all beings. Who just like yourself, 
wish only for happiness, wish to be free from suffering, wish to live with ease, wish to be fully liberated. So spreading your loving kindness to all beings in all directions, near and far, seen and unseen, imagining you're like the sun radiating the warmth and light of sunshine in all directions without any exception. So from the center of your chest, radiating the warm, loving glow of metta, a loving kindness in all directions, as far as your mind can reach. as wide as your heart can open. And wishing from the bottom of your heart for all beings to be well and happy, be free from suffering, to live with ease, and to be fully and truly liberated. Now you can slowly bring your mind back inwards. Back into the center of your chest. The feeling, the core, of loving kindness or metta emanating from the center of your chest, being with that feeling, and now especially bringing to mind Ajahn Brahm, Centering your well wishes towards him. And with that powerful metta that you've developed over the course of this meditation, really focus that loving kindness towards Ajahn Brahm. So may he enjoy good health, may 
May he enjoy long life. That he may continue all his good work in service of the Dhamma, in spreading the teachings, the path to true happiness. to as many beings as he can. And whatever merit, which is actually the feeling of happiness in your mind or your heart, whatever happiness you have developed both during this meditation, but also throughout your whole life, and any good actions you may have done. May all this merit be dedicated to Ajahn Brahm, but also to all of our Dhamma teachers, all of our friends on the path, anyone who has supported us, to grow in our virtue, in our peace, in our wisdom. May all these beings share in our happiness, in our merit. May it help them to be well and happy. May it help them to sustain this happiness and well-being. May they all attain the highest peace and the truest happiness and the greatest freedom, the ending of all suffering. So before we end this meditation session, just come back to the feeling in the center of your chest. Letting go of any warmth or joy and releasing that into the world in the universe and settling back to a state of mind that is open, calm, and clear. Noticing the effect of this period of sitting on your mind. How does your mind feel? Reviewing what you did with your mind in the past sitting how you work with it, what led to greater peace and happiness and openness, what did the feeling of metta feel like when it was strongest?
what helped it become stronger, what caused it to weaken. Just learning, not judging. And now we can ease our minds out of meditation by breathing in and out three times. So at your own pace. And after the third out breath, you can gently open your eyes to end the meditation. <laughs>